Uh, gracious Heavenly Father, how grateful we are for the power and the strength that you grant to us in the Lord Jesus Christ. And there are times in our lives when perhaps we thought we were strong enough in and of ourselves, and that was rather foolish of us to think that. We tonight want to confess uh, to you and acknowledge freely that we need you. We desperately depend upon you. So grant us mercy to understand your word and what it means for the application of truth to our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Philippians chapter 4. I'd like to read one verse tonight, and that being verse 13. Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. This is a, uh, a prison epistle written by the apostle Paul. And the fourth chapter, the last chapter of this epistle uh, is, is wonderful. It is marvelous in various ways concerning various issues. And we've considered uh, several of these key verses in this chapter for some weeks now, uh, verse 4, verse 6, verse 7. And now I'd like to look at verse, well, with verse 11, we did that last week. I'd like to look at verse 13. Paul has been talking about contentment, and he indeed says he is content, and in fact, he has learned to be content to the degree that he, he could be, by God's grace, content in whatever circumstance he found himself. There was a secret, and that was that is uh, determined by his dependence upon the Lord. And I think the secret that he refers to in verse 12, he says, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need, spins right into verse 13. What's the secret? How could he be so relaxed? How could he be so calm? How could his soul be soothed in the midst of hunger, in the midst of need, in the midst of pain, imprisonment, and even possible death? Notice what he says in verse 13. I can do all things through him him being christ through christ who strengthens me i can do all things through him who strengthens me that's the esv i'd like to read to you the amplified version of this verse uh, which I think is quite interesting. In fact, I wrote a devotion today to be included in the 2024 devotional book uh, from this verse, and I quoted from the Amplified Version. Here's what it says. I can do all things which God has called me to do through Christ who strengthens and empowers me. To fulfill his purpose. Thus, uh, I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. And then he ends with this statement. I am ready for anything and equal to anything through Christ who infuses me with inner strength and confident peace. Isn't that an extraordinary paraphrase of that? I think they got the point. I think they they know what Paul was saying. I, it's difficult to read. I can't believe they would say it like this. And yet upon reflection, I think they got it right when they say, because Christ is, is so great, so magnificent, so powerful, and I am I'm sufficient in his presence, in his person, in his provision, in his power, I am ready for anything. I am equal to anything through him. Bring it on. <laughs> and, you know, I, I thought about this last week leading up to Sunday's sermon. I think it was Sunday's sermon. I forget. Sometimes I forget what I preach. But I was thinking this thought. I think sometimes... We give the devil way too much credit. We're afraid of the devil. We're, we're worried about the devil. The devil's moving in our society and the devil attacks us and tempts us. And yeah, all that it very likely is true. 
but don't su don't subscribe to the devil what only belongs to the Lord. The devil is not omnipresent and the devil is not omnipotent. The Lord, by the way, the devil's in trouble. If he's going to take God on, he's not even going to be close. God is God and there's only one God and the devil is not God. I think we need to remember that. I think it's, it's in that similar vein that Paul says, look, Christ is so great and, and so sufficient for me that in him I can handle it. <laughs> that's not arrogance. That's bragging on Jesus in my life. Tonight, I want to talk to you on the subject, surprising confidence. Surprising confidence. I'm, I'm a little surprised, Paul. By the way, he's in prison. When he's, writing. <laughs> he's, he's not having a great day. And yet he's surprisingly confident. Two things I want you to note. We'll try to develop these two ideas uh, about surprising confidence in Christ, of course. One is surprising confidence is based on the strength that Christ gives or strength from Christ. Surprising confidence is based on the strength Christ gives to me. And second, the surprising confidence we have as Christians extends to every comprehensive situation. Now, I, I will try to show that both of these ideas are plainly, easily seen in this verse of Scripture. And, and it's surprising, and it's gloriously wonderful. This is good news. Number one, surprising confidence. Our confidence is based on strength we get from Christ. That that comes directly from the statement in verse 13 where Paul says I can do all things through him. Who what? Who strengthens me? How is it that Paul can say I can do all things through him because the him is Jesus and Jesus is going to strengthen me so that I can do everything God wants me to do through him, in him. There are a number of things I want to point out with this strength that we gain from Christ that gives us surprising confidence. First, presence. The presence of Christ. Second, the power of Christ. And third, the promises of Christ. The presence of Christ. Christ himself has promised. He promised the apostles. And through them, he promises us as well as, as well as they, that he, Christ, would never leave us. His presence is a constant fact of our lives. In good days and bad days, when we're obedient, when we're disobedient, no matter where we go, how we feel, what happens to us, or anything, the presence of Christ is a constant reality of our lives. It is that presence that strengthens us. Number two, the power of Christ strengthens us as well. Christ's presence brings power. His power is enough for us. And I think there's all of these ideas are found hidden or embedded in John 15, where Jesus says, of all believers, he's the vine, we're the branch, and apart from him, we can do nothing, but, but with him, we bear much fruit. The life of Christ flowing through us brings a power to accomplish all that God would have us to accomplish. And then we add to the presence of Christ, the power of Christ, the promises of Christ. Christ has promised all these things, provision, protection, providence and purpose christ is everything to us he is our life he describes himself in the gospel of john as we will see as we go through the gospel of john on sunday mornings that christ has described himself as as the life and he has come that we might have life this life involves his presence he is with us his power his, his ability that enables us to obey and the promises of provision, protection, providence, and purpose. 
I went to see my primary care physician the other day for my annual checkup. It's always much anticipated in my life to go see my doctor. And thankfully, I don't get to see him very often. But um, so we get reacquainted and how are things going? And he's graying just like I am. And I've had him for many, many years now. And so I asked, we were talking about health and my age and situation, various things. And he said, you know, John, he said, there, there, we've discovered in medical studies that the two most important things that determine a person's medical health are, now this is my, my medical doctor speaking. He said, number one, you need to have a reason to get up every morning. And number two, you need to be surrounded by people who love you. I thought I was listening to a preacher. This is a medical scientist talking to me. And I thought to myself, how blessed I am to have a reason to get up in the morning and to be surrounded by God's people who love me and I love. This is the strength of Christ to have a purpose to be providentially cared for, to be protected, to be provided for all the promises of Christ and the power of Christ and the presence of Christ. Christ is enough. Now, the question is this, do you believe that? Do I believe that? Number two, having considered the surprising confidence we have in the life that we live because of the strength Christ gives, we also have surprising confidence extended because of this strength to every comprehensive situation. Every comprehensive situation. I get that from the part of our text, which says, verse 13, again, I can do all things. Now, you want to be careful. There are times when comprehensive terms in the Bible do not mean comprehensive meaning. Uh, Mark chapter 1, when it refers to uh, the crowds John the Baptist was drawing, it says all Judea went out to hear him. That doesn't mean there wasn't one single shopkeeper left in Jerusalem to sell his wares. Because everybody was out seeing John. But it was like what it what he's saying, what Mark is saying is when you looked at the crowd, it looked like there wasn't anybody left anywhere else. They're all here. So it's a sense, it's an expression, a literary expression that that that's making a, a point. However, I think when we come to verse 13 of Philippians 4, I think this is absolutely as literal as you can get. He's not speaking metaphorically. He's speaking literally. When he says, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. All things. These, this is a comprehensive statement. Let me apply it in two ways. First, in the present, seemingly impossible stuff. Now, we won't take the time, but if I would open it up tonight and say, how many of you in your life right now feel like there's something going on that you're not sure you're going to make it? If this goes squirrely, <laughs> you're, you may be done for. Are there present situations like that in our lives, things that we have to endure? I was discipling a man many years ago now. His name was Peter. Not here, but in Indiana. And Peter was physically deformed. And uh, Peter came to know Christ. And I took him under my wing and I discipled Peter. And we were talking one day, he and I, about courage to die for Christ. And Peter said something that still resonates with me today. He said, he said, my, my problem isn't, isn't the problem of being willing to die for Christ. My problem has been being willing to live for Christ. You see, Peter tried to commit suicide before he came to know the Lord. 
He didn't want to live. He was disfigured. People treated him differently. And when he came to know Christ, he found the courage to live. We need to have the courage to endure well, to stick with it, to not give up, to accomplish the job that God has given us to do, to overcome, to overcome present, seemingly impossible things. But I think this also includes future possible overwhelming things. <laughs> future possible overwhelming things. I don't know about you. I, I'm, a, I'm kind of a planner on some things. I mean, other things, I don't really give a rip. I don't care, for example, about my sock drawer. Stay out of my sock drawer. Stay out of my sock drawer. Don't, don't mess with my socks. They're not organized. I'll just tell you that right now. The brown should be here and the blue should be here and the black. All of, I understand. I just don't care. I, I'm concerned on certain days that I may end up with two different colors of socks on. As long as my pants cover the socks, it doesn't really matter. But that's another issue altogether. But there are some things I really like to plan. I think down the road. I'm contemplating down the road. And sometimes that can be overwhelming. What if this happens? What if that happens? What's the devil going to do? What's the country going to do? Where, where's the world going to end up? Some of you, uh, you have children still. You have children at home or you have grandchildren. Do you ever ask, what are my grandchildren going to grow up to see in their lifetime? Has, has, has that thought ever crossed your mind? Future possible overwhelming things i think i can do all things include stuff that hasn't happened yet and that comes out kind of like this no matter what happens no matter what comes no matter what the devil does no matter what other people do i'm going to make it i'm going to make it i can do all things through him who strength you say, that sounds arrogant, doesn't it? But it's, it's a faith statement depending upon Christ that no matter what is now or my, no matter what will be, he's going to be enough for me. You got to believe it. This is written by a man in prison who was constantly and daily dependent upon Christ. However, I do want to point out a note on this, this aspect of our study which I've chosen to call surprising confidence extended to comprehensive situations. I, I do, and I, I'm trying not to, this isn't a glib thing, but I am struck by Paul's statement, I can do. I can do. He was a can-do person. I've, I know a lot of folks that are, I can't do. They tell you what they can't do more than what they can do. By the way, I think that's a disease. That's a disease. It's a, it's a self-deprecating uh, concept, and it's, it looks humble, but really it's laziness. Well, I can't do this, and I can't do that, and I can't. Well, what, what can you do? Don't tell me what you can't do. What can Paul said, I can do all things. I see in this, and I'm, I'm just raising things as I go along because it's what I do, and sometimes I get in trouble for it, but I enjoy it. I see both personal agency and personal accountability here. And we who are reformed believe that that it's God's sovereign will that matters in all things, including salvation. And, and there are some people who don't know what Reformed theology means, mistakenly believe that we believe that we have no will at all, and we don't exercise our will, and we don't choose anything. God just chooses for us. And that is not biblical teaching, nor is that Reformed theology. The reason I've used the word agency instead of will, personal agency, is we are responsible agents 
to do what God wants us to do. If God says, read your Bible, I guarantee you the Spirit won't open the Bible for you. The Spirit's going to inspire you to read the Bible, but you have to get a Bible. You have to set a time in the day. You have to discipline yourself to do it. That's personal agency. That's what Paul meant, part of it, when he said, I can't do. And the other is personal accountability, personal agency, personal accountability. We're accountable to God. <laughs> One of the, uh, I think it's true, I've heard it said many times, uh, and I can I can say to you, what's Ephesians 2, 8, 9? Boy, you'll just... Uh, you know, by grace, I will save through faith, knowledge of yourselves. It's a gift of God, lest any man should boast. What's verse 10 say? Well, let's look at verse 10. Verse 10 is in the same paragraph. All right. Verse, verses 8, 9, and 10. By grace, are you saved through faith? It's not of your own doing, ESV's version. It's a gift of God, not as a result of works, so that no one may boast. Not a result of works, so that no one may boast, but verse 10, we are Christ, God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus. What? For good works, which God prepared beforehand, we should walk in them. It was his predetermined will that you be saved. And it's his predetermined will that you do good works after you're saved. That's sanctification and that's service. I see that as personal accountability. God expects a, it is a sin to be a lazy Christian. Do I need to say that again? It's a sin to be a lazy Christian. Now, it's true to say this. Our circumstances, our health, our situation may limit what we can do. We agree with that. But you can never, ever, as long as you breathe, do nothing. Someone said to me once, all I can do is pray. I said, hallelujah, pray. What do you mean all I can do is pray? Prayer is powerful. Did you know that? I said, if you'll call my name before the Lord in prayer, you're doing a lot. I see that in Paul's comments. This strength that Christ provides not only extends to the present, but the future. And he assumes personal uh, responsibility for doing what he's supposed to. Okay, application, three things, and a quote from Richard Sibbs, and I'm done. Application, I got three things to say. One, Christians are called to live in constant dependence upon Christ. Christians are called to live in constant dependence upon Christ. I think that's in verse 13. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. This is like John 15, as I quoted earlier. Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. But through me, in me, in my life, Christ in you, the hope of glory. I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. We live in constant dependence upon the Lord. If you're young, whatever young means. And I'm not sure anymore what young means. I'm not sure anymore what old means. I, I'm absolutely certain old is older than I am. But the older you get, and I'm, I'm just sharing this from my experience. When I was young, I was just reviewing this the other day with somebody. When I was younger as a pastor, I was going to win the world by Friday. Watch me. And I took on every job and and uh, I just I just poured my life. But there was a lot of self-dependence in that. The older I've gotten, the more suspicious I've become that I'm not as good as I thought I was. And and secondly, the more absolutely certain I am that I need God in my life. I'm weak, I'm tired, I'm worn out, I'm beat up. <laughs> but I can do all things through Christ. I, I, just this constant dependence. We are made 
to live in dependence upon Christ. Number two, Christians are also called to live in joyful hope through Christ. Joyful hope. Yes, we acknowledge we're dependent upon Christ. Yes, we acknowledge we can't do anything in and of ourselves. Yes, we acknowledge this world is a sinful place. Yes, we have failed many, many times. But we are not called to be sour pusses. Just, we just, everything's wrong. Everything's bad. The world's going to pot. I can't do right. Just live under a cloud. It reminds me of that character on Peanuts, Pigpen. Any of you read Peanuts? It's the most glorious cartoon series ever written. And there's more theology in Peanuts than in a lot of churches, but I'll leave that. Linus is quoting theology. And, and uh, I think Snoopy the other day was on his doghouse with a typewriter writing a theological systematic theology. It's great. And, and someone told him, you can't do this, Snoopy, because you're too dogmatic i didn't say that for k groups you got that tonight we are called to not just live in a cloud of our own failure like pig pen we are called to live in the sunshine of christ's victory and hope joyful hope stop talking about what's wrong and start talking about Christ. We are called to live with the joy of Christ in the moment in which we live and as we anticipate the future. Third, Christians are also called to live in active obedience in Christ. Now, I could have said, and it would have been true, we're called to live in active obedience to Christ. That's not what I'm saying. We are called to live in active obedience in Christ. That is, in Him, we have the strength to obey, to be active, to be energetic. I think what Paul is saying is everything I need to be what God has called me to be in, in redemption. I find in Christ. And Richard Sibbs says the following, and I quote him as I conclude. It is destructive to add anything to Christ. Sibbs, S-I-B-B-E-S, -B -B -E Richard Sibbs. It is destructive to add anything to Christ. He is all we need. That's the gospel. That's the gospel. Brothers and sisters in Christ, I urge you again to hear the amplified version of this verse. And then we pray, praying God will help us. I can do all things which he has called me to do through Christ who strengthens and empowers me to fulfill his purpose. And I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. I am ready for anything. I'm equal for anything through him who infuses me with inner strength and confident peace. Let's pray together. Bless us, Lord, we pray. Not to live self-dependent lives, but Christ-dependent lives. Not self-sufficient lives, but Christ-sufficient lives. And we pray that you'll bear fruit through our lives for your glory and honor. To that end, we offer ourselves to you. Show us your strength and your power. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.